Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, big hello to the new subscribers. Thank you guys for stopping in. Okay, so, got so many directions to go. I don't know which one I should take, but uh, I think I'm going to start right here on this other 30 Johnson that uh, one of my good customers bring in um, and do a fax check on that one just to see where it's at. I've got his other 30 Johnson up and running squared away so he's he's at least got his uh, main engine that he can use and uh, this is an engine that I threw together probably over a decade ago for him and uh, it's it's a good runner but it's been getting It's been getting road hard. So let me get the spark checker hooked up and uh, we'll start a fact check on this thing and see what we get and go from there. I've got all kind of different motors I can bring in here. And uh, so hopefully this Johnson won't be a real big issue. We can get it squared away at least enough for him to use it this trapping season. And we'll go from there. So let's get to it. Okay, so I pulled the candles out of it. They are L77JC4. L77JC4. They both look pretty black. And, uh, maybe this one looks a little better, but they're pretty, pretty black, pretty oily. So let's see what we get. I hooked my Sparky Spider up. Let me get you down in there. Okay. Should be able to look what we got here. I put a little glove right here. Well, I said I had my sparky checker hooked up. This one didn't want to be hooked up. Now I got my sparky check hooked up. I put this little glove here so I don't get no arcing. No arcing into the sparking cow pan. Um, now you guys can't see. Let me see. Let me see. If I can find a way to get you. So you can see if there's any spark action. Uh, maybe in there? Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, maybe not. Maybe not. It should not be this difficult. But I'm not seeing real good places to hook to. Right there ought to do. You guys in there? Yeah, no, thank you. So I think we got two spark plugs hooked up this time. Let's see. Yeah. They don't arc together. Let's see if we get right in here. It's all one. Yeah. Oh, I saw two. We got good hot spocky on both of them. One thing I did notice, if I bring you round, bring you round, bring you round, 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 you can notice too. Here's the kill wire. You see the ground to the kill wire? That's been snippet. Snippet. And the other one, where is it at? Now uh, they're coming through here, here. Well, there, well, the other one is still hooked up into the little, yeah, there's the black and yellow wire, black wire with yellow stripe. It's missing, the, oh, there it is. Okay. So, we'll hook that back up and see if that kills it. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just going to use one of these little clippies here real quick. You've seen those probably before. You just take one of the wire, end of the wires, put it in there, and it has a stop that it goes up against. You put the other wire in there, and essentially when you smash that little knife blade, it hooks the two together, like I'm so. So you've probably seen those before. Quick and easy, cheesy, peasy, wheezy. There. Now let's see if we have spark or if that switch is causing a problem. 
Is it causing a problem? You can see I got the little MOB man overboard deal right there hooked up. So we should have spark steel right in there. Good spark. Now let's pull the man overboard. Where so actually I'm just gonna push the button. So I'm pushing the button, I should have no spark. No spark. Spark. Alright, what can I do you for? Oh, I was, I was actually coming over from my buddy. Do you got any do you got any two strokes for sale or no? He's got an Evan Rood. It's an old Evan Rood, but he broke the freaking throttle. The throttle we ran it last year, but the throttle just wouldn't engage, then he broke the little mount. I don't know if you have the same was this an Evan Rood? Yeah, well that's a John. Same thing, yeah. Oh, okay, where's the the little plastic mount? Throttle comes through and it had a little plastic mount. Is that the throttle mount there? Uh, I don't know what you mean by the mount. Right here, this part. Sorry, man. Yeah. Okay, this. When I would turn the throttle on this thing, it wouldn't advance very much on this cable here. And so I got to looking in here, and what I found, I'll show you. This piece of handle here has been replaced, and it has the stop switch here. Well, this also was set up at one time. It looks like the actual grip had the screw part and had a, a man overboard switch out here and this was left inside there this broke off of that original MOB switch that would slide in there and it was jammed all up in there so the the Healy the Healy type well you'll see it couldn't move forward because this was jammed in there so I took some needle nose pulled that out so now you got all these little bits and parts and bits and parts and pieces, parts and bits, and I'll show you those. You got the slides, you got the rollers, you got the pin. Okay. You got all those. So that's your slides, that's your pin, and those are your rollers. And they'll go into this handle mechanism. So first thing we got to do is line up. It's already pretty lined up. Let me put a little dab of geese on this. Sloth around in that hole because it was pretty tight coming out of there anyway. Still going to be, oh there, not too bad. Okay, so that goes in there. Then you put your slides. They go in there. Mm-hmm, okay. Then you can lift it up, put the bottoms slide on and it really helps to put some grease on these little rollers um, because they'll pop you know you'll drop them and you don't want to drop them I'm gonna... and here's a little molecular or whatever the word the hell is you use and they go there and they go there. There's your rollers. Give them a pinch. Okay, then I put some geese in there, a little um, lithium. And then you see that slot there? You're going to line that up with this here. Lock them so. And that grease will help it stick. And that grease won't help it stick. No, that grease will help it stick. I should have moved it in the up position if it'll stay. I don't know if it will or not. Let me see if it'll stay. You gonna stay? Now watch as soon as I turn away. Drop. Okay. Same here. That little slot goes with there. Now my little thing moves in and out. Nice. Okay. 
Then you line up your little ear nipples here with the hole there. Okay. Line that up. Push it on. See this used to have a man overboard switch and that broken piece was jammed in there. But if you look up at my cable now, I get you up there, I get you up there. Someday. Okay, if you look at the cable here now, it goes in and way in and out. And nice and easy. So I'll hook that back up to the riser here and it'll move the stator and and the uh, throttle cam and all. So let me get that done. I'll be right back. Now people are always asking me why do I use the dielectric on these things? Um, couple reasons. I find that if I put a little bit of the dielectric on the ceramic it makes the plugs come off much easier. This rubber can almost you know it becomes like it's glued onto the ceramics on these things if they're running salt water. So I put the dab of the dielectric I put it mostly on the ceramic and then just wipe the tip a little and that keeps that corrosion in a salt water environment down. That's why I do it and that's why I use it. I, I don't put a gob in there. I just put a little on the ceramic, wipe it around the ceramic and then just a little bit on the tip. That keeps those spark plug seats nice and rust free and it'll also help you pull off the plugs if you file a plug or anything. Well right now Everything seems, seems to be working pretty decent on this thing. So, I say we put it in the tank and see what we get. It's raining and yucky, but boy ain't the grass pretty. Isn't that pretty? Not as pretty as that little cutie. All right, so let me get this guy in the tank. Get you over here. Let's see what we can do. We do, we do, we do. Where are we at? Squeezy that bulb. Look at my primer, see if I see anything going. Yep, I see some gas go in. Give it three of them. We are in neutral. Give it some gas. Right maybe past the marks. Let's yeah, see if we get anything. That kill switch, blah blah. Oh, let me tighten these down a little bit, at least one of them. Now this particular customer here, he's a little bit hard on these motors, but, all right, let's see what we get.
we got this little 30 Johnson pretty squared away. Uh, my customer, let me turn this sucker off. It's so noisy. Um, yeah, the guy that owns these motors, now he's got a pair of them and they're both in really good shape. I want to show you what I found. Um, I got three things out of, out of that throttle grip. This is the old piece and I can show you kind of where that came from and all. Then I found another little piece of it, a little piece of plastic, but I also found this. It's just a little pin. Um, that was in there. So I don't know what that is. The only thing I can think of let me get a needle nose. The only thing I can think of is that it was a uh, maybe it maybe that uh, the thing that goes through the actual throttle cable in there that holds the rollers one on each side. Maybe this is a, an old broken off piece piece of that. It kind of looks like it's broken off. But I don't know. I don't know what that is. That was in there. So all that stuff, it's part of this is a hodgepodge handle is what it is. Um, this piece I do believe is off an older 15 9.9 .9 Johnson, this little short stubby handle that has the kill switch here. And this Grip and all is off a the original probably 30 horse handle that had the man overboard switch out here And this screws to adjust the idle a little bit, but that's all been removed and some of that plastic that Helped feed the wire through there. That's what that broken plastic is, but he, he's got a real nice throttle now So that'd do him good So that's what that was that's the problem with that one and the kill switch was just unhooked probably in an effort to pull it out or something. Anyway, motor squared away now. Runs good, shifts good, pees good. Should be good to go and he's got a pair so he should be pretty pleased. Now, so that's where we're at with that guy. So I'm going to have to light off. Hang on. Shut off my compressor. Everything wants to be noisy today. Everything wants to be noisy today. I don't know. Um, so we got this one squared away. And what I'll have to do is get my little mini dozer. Get this one out of here. And I'm not sure what I'm going to bring in next. But I do have an idea. something you guys been wanting to see so uh, I think I'm gonna swap these out real quick I'll be back and we'll get that one set up on the uh, tank stand and see what we can do with it I'll be right back Okay, so before we move on, I want to give a couple shout outs to Jared A. He's in South Louisiana. Man, I wish I had me some of them mud bugs with the spices, what's all in them, made the corn and the. Mm, get hungry just thinking about it. He says, Jared A says, I got a 48 special and I just love it. Now, it's his favorite motor. So, take care of it. It'll take care of you. All right, and then Bob Riley. He's the proud owner of a Merck 110 9.8. I happen to own one of those myself, and I, too, like it very much. So, that's the, the motor he likes, and I just, I thought that's interesting, you know. 
people go out and spend literally hundreds of thousands on boats and, and outboards these days. And yes, you can put a couple of twins or triplets on the back of your boat and spend over 100k in today's outboard market pretty easily. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, look at that new Mercury V12. Um, but some people, you know, all they need is a little 9.8 or whatnot. Get them around up and down the river, out on the lake, catch a few fish or have a good boat ride. And that's all it takes. So he likes his little 110, 9.8. And I don't blame him good outboard there. So let's get to moving on to the next one. people doing some guessing and quite a few of you knew exactly what it was right down to the uh, very place it was manufactured. Some people told me how many they thought came into the States and Canada and so forth. And so what is it? What is it? It
Spirit Outboard Motor. Spirit Marine Division, Arctic Enterprises, Inc. Made in Japan. Hopefully my... I don't think I have it zoomed in, do I? Okay. Well, it ain't much of a mystery no more, is it? That's the spirit. So, she's a runner now. Um, still got a ways to go. One of the transom clamps is still stoved up. So I'll need to drill a couple lubrication holes and shoot some lubrication in there. And I uh, haven't even tested the tilt mechanism to see if it tilts up and down properly. And the throttle cable still needs to be hooked up. Throttle cables. But they seem free, but I'm going to have to do a little work on them to get them hooked up. And... Uh, I wouldn't take this out on the water and run it without replacing that impeller. Um, although it seems to be peeing at the blubber hole. This does not have a tail tail. I could put one on it, but I don't think I will. But I do want to get an impeller in there. Drop that lower and uh, change that lower unit oil. So we got a long way to go, but I just went through the carburetor and got it all cleaned up and made sure she had Bucky and rehooked up to kill Switchy and all that worked out good. So that's the spirit. Okay, if you're wondering about that flushing device that I'm using, this is what they are. They don't sell them anymore, but you can get them off of eBay in different places. This would be the 917 that fits those type of outboards that have the little water intake at the bottom. This goes on that and then this hooks up via the springs over the cav plate. This is a 917 dry land test flush. Dry land test flush and they're called they're made by tempo or were back in the day made by tempo and they're called the flushettas if I remember right flushette flushette flushetto I don't know but they come in a couple different sizes that I know of I have this one for the smaller up to about like 14 horsepowers back in the day. This is the 918. Screws onto the hose there. Same deal. Goes in there. So you can still find them. Um, I have a few of them. No, I don't want to sell them. Because as you can see, I use them. And uh, But that's what those are if you're interested. There's the Flushetta or Flushette. Dry land test flush, and they come in a 917 model, a 918, and I think there's a 916. But that's what's on that spirit that I'm using to flush it with. That be what I'm using. Because it seems like every time I run those, I always, people ask, you know, I get a couple questions. What are those? Where would you get that? Um, I got mine off, well, that's not true. I know I got one of them at least off of eBay. I saw it on there and it, nobody was bidding on it. So I was like, I bid on it. And I did and I won the bid for next to nothing. I think I paid like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that. A couple bucks shipping. But I knew what it was. Nobody seemed to be bidding on it, so I picked it up. Um, because I lose them. Sometimes I forget to take them off outboards. I undo the hose and leave the... You know. You know. And they, they go away. They drive away. 
So, uh, you can pick them up on eBay, I'm sure other places, yard sales, garage sales. Um, I got one of mine at least when I bought out an old outboard shop uh, years ago. It was in a milk crate full of stuff that I got. And uh, so, no more mystery. That's it on that one. And that's the flushing device I use. Still got a ways to go on it, but that's going to be a wrap on this one. So that's one more overdue hat from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass.